Can you remember the last time someone asked what you thought and also actually listened? And what about when your input was valued and appreciated? Imagine that process in a large group. Imagine feeling like a unified front against something harmful or destructive. Imagine the pushback and knowing that you are resilient and pushing back some more. That is the art of creating resistance. I was first exposed to community engagement as a student at Burlington College. My teachers encouraged me to go into town and get involved, and I went to meetings and charrettes and other things where my voice was part of the decision-making process, and it was a very powerful experience for me, and it paved the path in me learning about what true community engagement was. Um, some projects that I learned about and followed that have a true community engagement process are the Village of Arts and Humanities in the north central part of Philadelphia. Uh, Forty years ago, Arthur Hall started a uh, humanitarian center um, that was really for the residents to come to a place and sing and dance and have a cultural experience. Uh, the neighborhood was still pretty laden with um, garbage and poverty and downtrodden, and so they hired artist Lily Ye, who was a mosaic artist who created um, multiple mosaic sculptures um, that really brought uh, people into the neighborhood and created a pride over the neighborhood and engaged people um, in the work that they were doing. It's now um, almost a whole block long, and it's an active community center in which multiple programs are happening that are not just creative, but really engage the community um, empowerment. Yeah. Somebody's familiar with that, that's awesome. Um, another project uh, that was really exciting to me, um, the next slide is coming, is the Dudley Street Neighborhood Initiative. Um, and that is uh, in Roxbury, a neighborhood outside of Boston. Um, and they have been involved in a decades-long process to reclaim their neighborhood. Um, there was a time in their neighborhood where, um, you know, there was places where the landlords were setting their buildings on fire rather than collecting rent because they couldn't afford it. The city was dumping uh, trash there. And so they went through many, many processes of community engagement, uh, building relationships with the city, um, and creating uh, murals and other works of art to share uh, the process that they had. And they are now living in a highly functional um, a pro uh, environment and uh, neighborhood um, working really well with um, the folks that are there. Project Row Houses, uh, in 1993, uh, artist Rick Lowe and other African-American artists in Houston, Texas, saw this row of dilapidated buildings and row houses and saw an opportunity. And so what they did was created um, a project that started off uh, creating studios, um, but really, really engaged other folks in the community, working with um, low-income folks, and um, now has grown so big um, that there's artists uh, coming from all over the world to come and engage in cultural um, heritage, and also it is actually one of the projects that's gotten so big that it has become almost problematic in some way, and I'm happy to talk about that after. Um, in 2015, I had the opportunity to take some of my learning and uh, work with a community engagement process. Uh, Plan BTV South End um, offered a few artist grants to go into communities in Burlington to do some more research and find out what people wanted in the South End. A colleague of mine got one of these grants and worked with folks in low-income housing in the South End, uh, doing a process of using um, questionnaires and focus groups and one-on-one -on -one interviews to hear about their visions and their struggles about the South End. Um, and we brought that, and cre created a mural and brought that to the South End charrette uh, that Plan B TV South End did to try to include their voices. They said that in that process they felt their voices were heard. While they <laughs> thought their voices were heard, we also thought that the process was problematic. And one of the charrettes at Arts Riot, we did a guerrilla installation called Occupy Small Street, which you see a little toys here. Um, and they have little protest signs saying what they were frustrated with the process. And we also encouraged other people to fill out protest signs. Um, so it was part of that. Um, artist Suzanne Lacey uh, engaged in a decade-long process called the Oakland Projects in the Oakland area. This was a particular one called uh, Roof on Fire in 1993, where 220 high school students, unscripted and unedited, talked about life and sex and drugs and education and their future. Um, oh, this is really fast. Fabiana Rodriguez uh, is an artist also in the Bay Area who is known um, for her migration as Beautiful Butterfly, works primarily in immigration and women's rights in women's bodies. She is a printmaker, um, 
and her work has been replicated and seen throughout the country, um, especially now that we're looking at more immigration issues. She also started an organization called Culture Strike that works with artists and folks with marginalized identities to really include those voices um, and make sure that that is part of creating literal acts of resistance um, and taking these, uh, these voices and these ideas to the streets. Um, and this is also in the Oakland area. Um, in Earlier this year in 2019, I had the opportunity to start my own project called At the Root that's a community engagement project. One of the things I've been able to do is partner uh, with local organizations like 350 Vermont and Vermont um, Women's March to have signs and banner workshops in which we create literally signs and banners and creating little arts of resistance. Another thing that I do is a monthly series called the Over Dinner Series, in which we get together and talk about the issues that are pressing to all of us right now. Uh, we talk about uh, racism and economy and um, everything. And so, you know, these kind of the conversations that we might have over dinner or have over drinks and really kind of get into the heart of what we are trying to do and figure out ways that we can resist and fight back. But in this case, we're doing it with a facilitator who has some experience um, in the topic of whatever we're talking about. Um, and this is one we're here with uh, co about collectivized economies, um, which is a really great, great experience. Um, sometimes community engagement doesn't work <laughs> the way we want it to. Um, and it's good to remember that community engagement really is about the process. Um, and community engagement is about building relationships and really listening to people and remembering that process is key. Audience participation is not community engagement. Um, and so I just also wanted to share that we are a very strong community with a history of community engagement, and this is a great time for us to continue to come together and find new and old ways to engage in resistance and community engagement, and I hope we can all keep doing this together. Thank you. Yeah.